This is a quick overview of the Raspberry Pi Pure Data synthesizer that I built. Um, this is version two. I built one in 2017 that was a little simpler. Now with the newer models, it can do a lot more. So I built a new one. Um, basically there are eight push buttons, eight knobs, and then you have two control buttons and um, or sort of a rogue knob, and then the main volume knob is over here. Um, it, the thing that's different from the one in 2017 is one, the Pi is not a Pi 2, it's a Pi 4 uh, with eight gigs of RAM, so it can run um, much better um, pure data patches or more robust pure data patches. And the LCD is a lot easier to work with. Um, and so the, the unique thing is this, is I can scroll through. There are many other synths already made like this using this idea but i wanted to build my own um basically the menu here is patch one patch two patch three patch four use this button to cycle through which synth you want to load up and then it also has an edit mode that i can put it in here to um change the patches when i need to um, and then it also has a simple way to just quit turn off the whole synth so in this case, I have some real basic patches loaded up. So this is just an FM um, synth here that, <laughs> why won't you load? There we go. And if we turn this up, um, it doesn't do anything terribly exciting, except that it's just a simple FM synth that uses three knobs. There's a simplicity to this that I like. Okay, so that's nothing to really scream about. Um, the other thing we can do is then you can go back and here's the third patch I have on here is more of a sample based thing. Um, and I like this. They're hundreds. Crazy for cocaine. So the odd guy was. <laughs> get into more skunky things. Um, Okay, so you kind of get the idea of that. So um, what I like about this is the scale. It's super small, and it does a lot of the things that I like to do maybe with Max MSP, but just in a real stripped-down, raw kind of version. It reminds me of the... Um, I've built a Cacophonator or Atari Punk console, um, sort of along those lines of homemade... DIY synth culture. Um, it used to be inexpensive, <laughs> but now the pies are like 150 bucks, which, you know, supply chain, what are you going to do? Uh, inside the box, I made, uh, I bought this wooden box. It's just a cheesy, not very well made um, jewelry box uh, that you can paint. It's like a crafting box. But what's cool about this is the wood is really easy to work with. So drilling these holes out, cutting out the panel for the LCD was a bit of a hack, but um, it worked. It, was, it wasn't too bad to work with. And then what I like about it is it's got the, the top. So when I made it, I was able to just take these hinges off and build the panel by itself, which was um, kind of nice. And then as things will happen, something will go wrong. Maybe a pot will come loose or something. I mean, so far, so good. I've had this for like eight months now, and it hasn't really... Um, screwed up yet but if I need to fix anything I can just flip this open and then if you look on the inside um, you know homemade electronics here we've got the pie down here and the GPIO pins and on the sides and in the back I cut out a little hole for the various um, ports on the pie so the USB and the Ethernet and then the sound out um, is there and then I have two little boards with an A uh, to D chip on it that is um, 
just converting things from analog to digital for the Pi, and the Pi is happy about that. And I just have these kind of free floating um, in here. And then um, everything's just wired up. The grounds are all shared. And, um, you know, if I need to get in and repair anything, I can easily do that without breaking, you know, open a box or, or do anything like that. So it's easy access, probably easier than like pedals and things when you change the batteries. Um, yeah, I would like to, if I ever find the time to go down the wormhole and make a little PCB for this, because it's such a simple circuit, like for the pots and the buttons. Um, so that's something I'm thinking about doing. And then the other thing is it runs pure data patches, but the intermediary between all of this to control the display and these other things is Python. So there's a bunch of Python, or there's one big Python script running that's handling the menus and some other things. So um, that's PySynth 2.0.